Last week on this program, Isaac and I briefly explained the example of perfect and sinless authority possessed only by the Lord. Now that means Jehovah God. What that literally means in the Hebrew is the existing one. Whenever you see LORD in the Old Testament, in all caps, it's the proper name of the one true God. This is the God of the Bible that most people do not know, and the devil wants to keep people from knowing. Now in part one and two of this God Is series, uh, we shared how that according to the latest Pew Research, only about 56% of Americans even say they believe in God of the Bible. Gallup research even suggests that that number is closer to 40% if people are asked if they have any confidence in the God of the Bible. Even more shockingly, as we cited before, based on other George Barna surveys, even those Americans who profess to be born again, now get this, only about 5 to 7 percent of them that's less than 10%, right? Less than about 5 to 7% of those who profess to be born again could possibly know or have a relationship with the one true Lord, the God of the Bible, and Jesus Christ. Based on what? Well, based on their other beliefs about the Bible and what they say about God and the Holy Spirit, in which many don't believe. Now, in today's program, Ephesus, Isaac and I will focus on the person of Jesus Christ and connect Him as the ultimate fulfillment of the justice, the holiness, the love, the goodness, and the mercy of God, which we talked about in the first series, first program, and in His future role as judge, lawgiver, and king of all kings that we talked about in the last program. Now in John 1, 29, Scripture records this, and the next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Then in Philippians 2 and verse 7, the Apostle Paul records, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God hath highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father." All right, Isaac, that's an exciting passage, mm -hmm. isn't it? Not, I mean, wow, what an amazing thing as we consider uh, God, which we've said from the beginning, we can't describe, but we, we've undertaken something in these three programs that is like Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. You can't do it uh, fully, but hopefully we've tried to do some things that help, help our viewers. But um, for those who may not have watched the prior two programs, can you connect this concept of um, Jesus as the servant, the humble servant, in the form of God, um, all of those things, and connect them uh, with these character traits that we have put together so far of uh, the character and nature of God, and bring that into focus here as we now move into this program focus today. Well, you know, Sam, even as we kind of ended the program the last time, we said, if you don't accept Christ, you are going to be facing this perfect, holy God, a God of justice, a God who is the judge and the lawmaker and all, you know, 
and you need Christ. Well, that's where Christ comes in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank goodness we have him because um, we talked about how God is just. He always does what's right. He is pure. He has no evil intention. Uh, he loves in a sacrificial way. He does what is right, what is good, and he gives us mercy. We talked that governmentally his role is, is that he's all of the above. He's the king, so he's the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, everything. He's, he's judge, he's lawmaker, and he's king. And that's what we're going to be facing in Judgment Day. We talk about Judgment Day. Jesus talked about Judgment Day. Without Jesus, that's what we're facing. The most, uh, you talk about John chapter 1, a couple chapters later, the most powerful or at least the most well-known verse in all of Scripture, John 3, 16. Because God is love, He loved the world so much that He sends Jesus, the Lamb of God, to make this bridge that we can never get across. For God so loved the world that He, he, he sends Jesus then so that we don't have to, in the word, is perish. And so um, we, we get to look now at the everlasting life because of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. And even uh, this program today, we're going to be talking about Jesus, that He is God. He is all these things we said about God, but He came and He came as a servant and He came and He suffered and He died in our place and He rose again and He's coming back again. All of that is so that we don't have to perish, but that we can have eternal life through Him. We're going to talk more about that when we come back from our first time out truth, flexible or permanent, the Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant, culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs, the pastor, commentator or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter with hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide. A website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Isaac, we're talking about uh, God's love and trying to connect these character traits, the character and the nature of God in these three programs that we've put together here. Um, in the last segment, I read that passage where, the, where the, uh, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And then you read John 3, 16. Um, he came to present, to present salvation. And, you know, a lot of people have a problem with this. A lot of the devil says there is no God. We know from the surveys we've given that most of the majority of Americans don't believe in the God of the Bible. It's a real mm -hmm. problem. Um, many of them have difficulty with God as a judge and lawgiver and king because when Jesus said, I am the way, and the life, and the truth, and no man comes unto the Father but my me, the world says, oh, too narrow. Mm. There's got to be a lot of ways to heaven, but no. Um, God, as judge and lawgiver and king, He makes the rules. So we either get on His page, or we, we're not on a page. We have no appeal. He has judged. So speak just a little bit more about in Christ's first coming, as the Lamb of God, how that came, uh, why He came in that way, and, and how that fits together in His first coming, and then, and then, when He ultimately rose from the grave and He ascended, He did leave His disciples, ultimately us, with a message of what's being done now. Something we can look forward to, we can talk about that, but kind of put that together first, and then bring us up to date now. Right, so Jesus comes as the servant, which again isn't what they were expecting from their Mashiach, their, their anointed, the promised one. And, and coming as a servant, he comes with this, you already referred to it in one of our programs recently, agape love, this sacrificial love. So Jesus doesn't come born in the palace of Herod. You know, the, the wise men, they come and that's where they, they start looking. Well, if it's the king of the Jews, he should be there. No, he was born 
in a, a you know his his parents had nowhere to put him but a manger. <laughs> he was born to the lowliest of the low. Um, he he you know when he enters into Jerusalem at the end the, the week bef- his last week uh, he doesn't come riding uh, like a king of a conquering king on a, a you know magnificent stallion a white stallion. No, he comes on a, a young donkey. Um, again, showing like King David did, hey, I'm here to serve. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking over. I'm, I'm here to serve. And I'm leading right up to the end of his life. His, his disciples are coming with him in this triumphal entry, which ironically, he comes on the donkey. And, and they're, they're waiting for this great, glorious event. And Jesus says, the great, glorious event is that I'm going to die. I'm going to be killed. And said, no, 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 that can't be. And you look at John 13 through 17 and it starts out, you know, he's, he goes up to the upper room. This is his last chance with his disciples. And he washes their dirty, stinky feet. He serves them. And God is just, it's just so amazing. He doesn't just teach us. He shows us. And you, you keep talking about this. God is modeling what real authority looks like. Real authority under control is Jesus Christ. And that's the most powerful thing. If you want power, it has to be controlled. Otherwise, it just blows up. And Jesus has it under control. He washes his disciples' feet. He tells his disciples to love one another. And then he goes out and shocks all of them. He himself dies publicly in the most humiliating death. And, and so, Sam, you know, talk to us about this. The, the Israelites, many of them saw Jesus as, this could be our Savior. He could come and overthrow Rome. And then he serves them instead and gives himself in their place. And, and they're like, this is horrible. You know, they, they, it, 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 I guess you could say it went over their head. But talk to us about what happened there and where that led us to, why he came that way in his first coming. Huh. Well, you know, Isaac, it, God's ways are almost always the opposite of what we think. That's <laughs> so true. <laughs> yep. yeah, I mean, Jesus said, if you want to get ahead, stand back sure. here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, if you want to be raised up, kneel down. Mm-hmm. God's approach, because of the nature and the character of God and His perfect and righteous standards, are different than what we think. And yes, you're right, the Jews of Jesus' day wanted Him to come back with a sword and blood and cut these Romans to pieces. And He said, no. There's something far more important than that now, Mm -hmm. because the salvation of people's souls, the saving of their souls, could not be achieved without the God of the universe sacrificing His Son, manifesting love, but He provided a way. But what those Jews were looking for is going to happen. Mm It, it is going to happen, and, um, and that is the great thing about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay out just now what has happened, because Jesus said when He was with the um, disciples, when He passed the cup around, they broke the bread, they passed the cup around, and He said, now, I want to tell you all, I am not going to drink from this cup again until you drink with me in my kingdom. They didn't understand all that, really. Uh, but He said, until I come back, you love one another as I have loved you. That's right. Right? So, so now they've got a mission, then He ultimately ascended to heaven. And He said, I will come back, I'm going to go to my Father, I'm going to build a place for you. Mm-hmm. And when I am done, I'm going to come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Their minds are going like, wow, what are we talking about here? But He was talking about, when Jesus said, I will build My church. For 2,000 years, Isaac, the Lord Jesus Christ has been building the church, and it will complete. It'll, it's coming to a close, and when He comes, He will come back for us as the bridegroom for the bride, which the church is also called. That's called the rapture. And let me just read a little bit. I think I have some time. I'm just going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is what he's talking about. This is the next step. He said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have died in Christ, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also who sleep in Jesus, the church, this sleep in Jesus refers to those of us in our age since Christ ascended, um, will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that ye which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now wherefore, he says, comfort one another with these words. So Isaac, the next thing that Jesus told disciples was, I'm going to come back for you, mm -hmm. so be working, be, <laughs> be loving one another as I have said, and I'm going to come back. And then, at some point after that, the Bible tells us that the time of tribulation of God's judgment, of seven year tribulation, will begin where God as judge will begin to enact justice on this earth against those who have rejected and are rejecting Him, and that's the part of the seven year tribulation period. And at the end of that, then we know that there's going to be the battle of Armageddon, mm -hmm. and that's when Jesus Christ then as King of Kings comes back, and those us who were raptured come back with Him, and he is victorious, and the kingdoms of this world are made the kingdoms of our God. He subdues them all, and then the Lord Jesus Christ physically sets up His kingdom yes. in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and He reigns as King of kings. And with that, let me read this, because this is what He says here. Revelation chapter uh, 19, 11 uh, through 16, He says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Now, this is when Jesus comes back on the horse. Mm -hmm. And he that sat upon him was faithful and true, and in righteousness, justice, he doth judge and make war. So now he's coming back as judge, as king. His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. That's Jesus Christ, God's Son. Now he's king. And the armies which were in heaven, that'll be part of us who were raptured at 1 Thessalonians talks about, followed up with him upon white horses, clothed also in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Now's the sword is when it's going to come, with which he shall smite the nations. Judgment will come on those who have, re who have rebelled against him. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And here's this, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Isaac, this is what we can look forward Amen. to. He will come back. He's not just judge and lawgiver and king. He comes back as king of all kings, and he reigns for a thousand physical, literal years, and we will be with him. And all those who are watching me right now, if, we know, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, when the rapture occurs, you will be taken out. We will come back at this point with God, and we will reign. That is what we have hope to look forward to. God, who laid out the plan long ago, will ultimately reveal it all in Jesus Christ, the King of all mm -hmm. kings. Uh, Isaac, I referenced just briefly the rapture as the next event. Mm -hmm. um, now, it said there in Thessalonians, knowing these things, comfort one another mm -hmm. with these words. <laughs> Build that out a little bit. What should the knowledge and the confidence of the rapture is coming that is real? Like what, what Paul told the Thessalonians, how, sh how that should motivate us and influence our thinking now in light of who we have a be much better understanding of who God is. I love that, Sim, because that we should be excited about it. We should be looking forward to this. Uh, so you just read from 1 Thessalonians, and then also in a second letter to the same church, the, the believers at Thessalonica, it's a city in northern Greece, he talks about the Lord's return also. He says in uh, the second letter to the Thessalonians, 
chapter 2, he says, Now we greet you, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember I talked about the Lord's return. I'm greeting you in that again, and by our gathering together unto him, that rapturing us together unto him. And I greet you that way, he says, verse 2 here, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. He says, so he says, don't be scared of this. So many times when we think of the rapture, we get scared, and we hmm. should be looking forward to it. And why should we be looking forward to it? Because he promised that these glorious things that you described as this millennial reign and all of that, it comes after the rapture. And he's gathering us together. So um, we should be looking forward to it, whether he, we, we, we get to go home. Whether the Lord calls us home by death or by the rapture, we are looking forward to going home and being with him. Um, and he will make all things right. All these things we talked about, he will make it right. And let me just say this too. It's a sure thing that that is going to happen as the fact that he came, was born of a virgin, that he died for our sins, that he rose again. How do I know that? Because you just read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. He says, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, we believe this. And then he describes what you just read. So it, it's a glorious thing, Sam. Exciting things. <laughs> it, it is indeed. And with that, you did exactly what the Apostle Paul said. <clears throat> Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope that these words do in fact bring a comfort to you. We'll be back and close out this program in the series in just a bit. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand. Or watch what's on the station right now with our 24-7 live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device. Or go to our website, lighthousetv.org, for more information. Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap. And I hope that this program and the, the programs preceding this have made you excited about who God is as we conclude this study uh, of uh, some, just, just a little tip of the iceberg of talking about our understanding of God, His love, and His mercy. And Sam, with that, I'd just love to have you kind of wrap all of this together as we, it's exciting to study about God, to study Him, to know Him better and better. Uh, that is part of our calling as sons and daughters of God. For those who know Christ as Savior, we want to know God better. <laughs> we should want to know who, <laughs> That's right. who God is and know better. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that, that if you've watched these three programs or if didn't get all three, go back and look at the other two and then this one. But God's plan of salvation started in the Garden of Eden when the devil came and tempted Adam and Eve. A biblical worldview, as we talk about so much, is God created humankind in His image. Sin entered into the world. There was a fall precipitated by a real live devil, but God then provided for a plan of redemption. And He telegraphed it right in the first part of Genesis. Everything that we have seen through all of the Bible, and everything we've said today, is all a part of God revealing Himself to us. Sinners, undeserving of anything, dead in our trespasses and sins, the law tells us, God is lawgiver, tells us that. But God in His justice and His holiness can't allow us into heaven, but He loves us. And He's provided a way through Jesus Christ, His Son, who came in the first coming, as prophesied all through Scripture, as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and for all who trust in Him can, well, become a son of God, and have God the Father, our Abba, Father, justified now, not de 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 uh, being declared innocent by the judge, God the judge, not because of what we've done, but because of what He alone can do. So now, true believers, we, because of what Jesus Christ has done, because of God's love for us, His mercy, we can be part of His family. And we are a part now, those who are watching us, can be a part of the church, the bride of Christ. We literally, if we understand what we have talked about and what the Bible says, God is not only our Father, but Jesus Christ will become our literal husband. 
the bridegroom. He's coming back. That's called the rapture. I'm excited about that. What bride is not excited about a wedding? <laughs> I'm excited, and that's what Paul says in Thessalonians. Comfort one another with these words. So as we look around this age and these times in which we live, when things seem to be out of control, they're not out of control. They're falling into place. And knowing prophecies we've talked about so often is not to make us fear, but it's to make us, well, <laughs> hopeful. Because what God has already done in His first coming, we can believe that He will accomplish coming up in the rapture and His second coming. Are you prepared? If you haven't trusted Jesus Christ yet, I hope that, in fact, you do, and that what we've shared will lead you to that point. Well, thank you so much for watching us. If you've never ever written to us, please do that. If uh, you've never shared with us financially, possibly consider doing that. Uh, that's a way that you can help us communicate the truth. And I would also submit, lay up treasure in heaven where, wrath, moth, where moth and rust does not take away or destroy. God bless you. We'll see you back next week.